I still think it's important to include the automated DNA sequencing method, which is the most commonly used nowadays. And the automated DNA sequencing and the reason why I'm including it is because it's based on the Sanger method. And it's based on the principles of the Sanger method because it uses everything, including, and most importantly, the DN DDNTPs, or the chain termination nucleotides, to produce fragments that can then be separated by size in gel electrophoresis. Now, I have here an image that quickly illustrates what automated DNA sequencing is, and I'm going to pinpoint the main differences between this version of the Sanger method version, let's say, and the one that I just explained to you before. Now, the first thing is that you have, you still have a primer, you're still using DNA polymerase, and a template here, and I'm going to write here because it's very small. The letters are very small, it's probably hard to follow, but I'm going to write this is the primer and the template, and we're going to proceed the same way that we did on the previous method, but here is a little bit different in a couple of ways. The first way is that we don't label the primer, so no labeling the primer. Instead, we're going to label the DDNTPs, or the chain termination nucleotides and since we have or there are four types then we're going to have four colors four different colors for the DDNTPs now one important thing to mention is that the previous labeling we did was radioactive so we labeled the primer with a radioactive component now on this one we're going to label the DDNTPs with a fluorescent so a fluorescent label after we're done what's going to happen is instead of using or separating the DDNTPs into four containers we can mix this template or the, the we can mix the DDNTPs into the same container with a template and the primer this will save time and we can produce these fragments here and we can produce the same amount of fragments that we produced on the previous on the previous example, but in this case we're going to use the same solution or the same container and throw all of these fragments into a gel capillary or a capillary gel. I'm going to write here. It's a capillary gel. And then run a gel electrophoresis the same way we did previously. So what's going to happen is that the smaller molecules are going to end or migrate faster so they're going to end at the very bottom of the capillary and the larger molecules will migrate slower and be left here so the larger versus smaller the trick here and very useful trick is that we're using a laser and a detector and what's going to happen is at the end of the gel, there is a laser beam, as you can see here. There is a laser beam going through the gel. And the laser is illuminating the fragments before hitting a detector on the other side, as you can see here. So this is the detector. Detector. I need to write down because it's very small. And here is a laser so now the detector will register the frequency of the photons. Remember, fluorescent light. Um, and these photons are emitted from the fragments. This is a great method and helped a lot because as you can see, uh, you can do everything at once and this allows us to study larger DNA molecules or even go and study genomes such as the human genome because we're able to automate, which means we can make this, this process much easier and much faster.